Morning, church. How we doing? Yeah, so good to see you. Like David said, thank y'all for being flexible with us last week with online service. And we're in week five of the Heart of Worship. And I have absolutely enjoyed this series. Amen. Have you enjoyed this? It's been so good to just get back to what the heart of worship is. Because, I mean, that's why we were created. Like week one, David shared that the heart of worship, man, we were created to worship. We were created to glorify God and enjoy him. And the glorify God, I think we know that, but also there's the enjoying him, right? Like literally we get to enjoy God. We get to enjoy the peace that we have with him and the grace that we felt. And it's just such a a beautiful, wonderful thing. The second week, we looked at how we view God. Understanding who God is matters. God's holy. He deserves all our praise. He's high and lifted up. And we looked at a passage in Isaiah that that week that just really focuses on the beauty of who God is and his, his presence and his majesty and our response being repentance from that. Because when you're in the presence of God and holiness, you realize that you're not. It takes Jesus to change that, right? Week three, we looked at God's grace and mercy towards us. Everyone who has accepted Jesus in this room has been forgiven much. Amen? Like, never forget that as a Christian, that Jesus, perfect, gave his life for you, his grace and his mercy for you. He has forgiven you much. And that our response in that is is sacrifice, is to be reverent, is to be passionate. And last week, David uh, shared probably one of my favorite psalms, Psalm 63, of worshiping God in the wilderness. How many of you guys have ever been in the wilderness in life? Should be every hand. Okay, good. I'm just checking. I'm just making sure. Like, worshiping him in hard circumstances, worshiping him through pain, worshiping him in the wilderness, man, it is something special. It's something special for us to be able to do. So throughout this series, we've been really clear that worship is like our whole life. And if you've been in church for any amount of time, you've probably heard this idea. Worship is your whole life. It's not just the songs you sing, right? Like when we sing, that's not all of worship. And then we put our little worship button on and we worship and then we turn it off and we walk out in the world and we live our lives. No, no. Worship is a lifestyle. Amen? But also, worship is singing. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today, that the songs we sing are definitely a part of worship as as we sing to him. Our two core verses during this series, during this uh, message today, is going to be Ephesians 5 and Colossians 3. Ephesians 5 says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. And a similar passage in Colossians. Paul wrote both of these. Let the message of Christ dwell richly among you as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. So the University of Melbourne did... um, an article that was researching uh, the, the ways that singing helps humanity in general. There's actually a benefit to us as humans to sing. And so they went through these different things, and these will probably uh, make, make sense to you once I get into it. The first benefit <laughs> said singing, and if you're a mom or a dad, you, you know this, singing and soothing vocal sounds can calm down an infant, Right? Or something, it can help a child to emotionally and mentally connect with their caregivers. There's actually power in it, right? To be able to emotionally connect with your child or with a a, a caregiver. Singing helps to improve your mood. And you know this, like, singing helps to improve your mood. Like, when you go to the gym, right? How many of you guys actually go to the gym? Ooh, gross. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, It's like, it's this idea, like, when you put on certain music, you're probably not listening to calm classical music when you're working out, right? Like, 
You want to listen to something that kind of gets you going, that kind of can mess with so you can pump the extra weight, so you can run the extra mile, so that you can make it through whatever you're doing in that. It can actually change your mood. Singing helps people to emotionally regulate. If you're someone that struggles with anxiety or depression or yeah, at times you feel like you don't know where to turn and you don't know what to, to do, singing can help to regulate that mood and help you to come back and get calm again. <laughs> singing strengthens our identities. And so when I was 13, man, I loved grunge music. How many of you guys are from the 90s, right? It's like, hey, grunge, like Nir Nir Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots, Blind Melon, Foo Fighters. Man, I was into all of it, right? And I didn't just listen to the music, right? I, I started trying to look like those guys too, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the, the music you listen to and the songs you sing, man, it, it's like a part of who you are. And it can strengthen your identity. Singing helps to increase the oxytocin in our brains, which leads to increased feelings of happiness. So literally, we can become happier by singing. If you ever met people who sing all the time, you're like, God, those guys, man, why, they're so happy. I don't know which came first, the happiness or the singing, but it's like a loop, right? So they're singing because they're happy, and they're happy because they're singing. Singing helps us connect to our culture as well, to our surroundings. A few years ago, I went on a cruise with a buddy, and we went into a piano bar, and I've, I've never been in one before. There's a piano in the center of the bar, and there's like seats around it and seats all throughout it. You know, it's a cruise, so people are always just ha hanging out. And so you would walk up to the piano bar, and you would like put a song up there, and then this particular guy would let you sit up and sing with him, which was great. Man, that room was so connected when we would sing different songs, right? And it was like just a real co connection. It was such a power of song and connectedness through song. Singing unites people together. And so as we're looking at the heart of worship, how does that fit in for a Christian? How does singing fit into the heart of worship? We've already said that lifestyle is your worship, but singing is a part of it. So why do we sing as Christians? Well, there's several reasons. The first reason is to obey, which is always the best one, right? Over 400 scripture verses that reference singing in the Bible, almost 50 of them are telling us and commanding us to sing. One of those is, let's, let's see if you can catch what it says. Psalm 47, sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing him a psalm of praise. It's like this idea that we are singing to God, but not just that, that we sing and we make music in our hearts to God. Ephesians 5.19 says, Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. The Bible says here, Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. And for some of you, this is a glorious thing because it doesn't matter how you sound. <laughs> it's the heart of why you're singing. And you might be sitting here going, okay, I'm one of these Christians. I don't sing. I get it. But what do you do with scriptures like this? What do you do when the Bible says, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord? And you're like, I don't do that. Okay, but what do you, how, how do you handle that? How do you obey what God is asking us to, to do here, to get out of ourselves? How do you do that and just stay focused on, oh, I'm not a singer? It doesn't matter. It's the heart of why you're singing. It's the focus of why you're singing and the Holy Spirit that indwells you, which is a miraculous gift of God that we have inside of us, will empower you in that. We'll talk more about that. A second reason to sing is to follow his example. Jesus sings in the Gospels. Did you know that? In Matthew, after the first Lord's Supper, the first time Jesus is saying, this is my body that's going to be broken for you. It's my blood that's going to be poured out for you. After they shared that for the first time, what did they do? They sang a hymn together. It connected the moment, connected them, and I guarantee you this wasn't the first time they ever sang a hymn. 
The Bible says that God himself literally sings over his people in the Old Testament in Zephaniah 3.17. In Ephesians 5 and in Colossians 3, we, the Bible connects being filled with the Holy Spirit as being connected and singing to God, meaning that the Holy Spirit will lead us to sing with our hearts to God. Hebrews 2, 12, and this is uh, quoting Jesus here. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters in the assembly. I will sing your praises. And Jesus is talking, and he's saying, I am not ashamed to call you brothers and sisters because we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, leading all of us. And when we sing, we don't just sing as individuals, we sing as a family. There's a connectedness to it and following after him. Another reason is to remind us. This is when I was getting ready for this message. This is probably, spoiler alert, my favorite point. <laughs> that God reminds us of all he's done in our lives when we sing. There's a couple songs that I cannot get through without crying because they just hit the truth of, of what God has done in my heart and in my life and what he's brought me through and what he continues to bring me through. And maybe you have that, right? That singing can remind us of his grace. It can remind us of his mercy. It can remind us of what he's done. The Bible says... Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Meaning that when we sing together, this wisdom that, that, that we get um, is actually something that we can share with each other. The Bible uses the word admonish one another with all wisdom through these songs and hymns. And the, the word here means to remind it means to put into your mind to put into mind this wisdom and a big way that we do that is through these songs that the new person that we are in Jesus walks in the word and worship with other people whereas trusting Jesus man is an individual commitment right nobody can do that for you but once you trust him as your savior, you're immediately a part of a family. You're immediately connected to every other believer that has the Holy Spirit living inside of them at the same time. What a beautiful miracle that we get to worship with other people that have the same spirit. We're re reminded of that. We're reminded of biblical truth as we sing as well. The words matter. Like, we're real careful about the songs we pick to sing on Sunday because the words matter. We're real careful about what we say when we preach because the words matter, right? Because we are trying to push biblical truth and what God says in his word. It's not my thoughts. It's not the band's thoughts. It's we are trying to share and to be reminded of who God is and his greatness and singing with each other matters. We are reminded of what God has done in our spirits, in our minds, in our emotions, in our bodies, in our relationships. We're reminded that he's faithful even when we don't feel like he is. We're reminded that he's good even when we're in the middle of that wilderness like David was talking about. This hymn here, this is How Great Thou Art. How many of you guys know this hymn? Man, it's like one that I grew up on. I want us to sing that together. Is that okay with you guys? Yes. So let's just sing it. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. It just does something 
inside you, doesn't it? It's just singing. It. It's different than just saying it. It, it, it. it reminds us that he's good. And when we sing it, our whole body is connected to that. A fourth reason, to focus on eternity. That as Christians, we sing to be able to focus on the future of what God has for us. The book of Revelation, chapter 5 says, In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne, to the lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. We will be worshiping God forever and ever. Amen? Amen. But you know what's so cool? I love how the Bible does this. You're included in this verse. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them. That's you. Literally, the Bible's telling you what you're going to be doing in heaven. We will be singing praises. We will be saying, worthy is the lamb. The songs that we sing here remind us the shortness of this life our need for Jesus to save us, our gratefulness for his grace and his mercy that's been given, our future with Jesus to see him face to face one day, to be in his presence, to sing about it helps our hearts stay focused on eternity. And if you are like me and you have loved ones that have already passed, man, it's such a blessing to know that when we're with Jesus, we're going to be with those people too. Life is hard, and it's easy to get sidetracked. Singing to Jesus helps our minds stay focused on what is true about our future, about our security, what's true about our very peace that we have. So the heart of worship in song is the Holy Spirit empowering and leading us and all of this happens because we know Jesus as our savior like David was talking a few weeks ago about the grace and mercy that we have what we've been given from Jesus changes us from the inside out and it's because of the Holy Spirit that empowers us to sing and to worship Ephesians 5 don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, but instead be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, so interesting here. Paul contrasts drunkenness and being filled with the Holy Spirit. So here's what drunkenness does. It numbs us, makes us loose with our words and with our actions. It's a coping strategy that can get out of control very quickly it's a depressant that messes with our ability to make good choices and show self-control. And Paul contrasts that with living a spirit-filled life. Instead of giving our control to other things or trying to hold on to it ourselves, we can give control to the Holy Spirit. We give control to him and we can trust in him to lead us, to guide us to help us sing and make music to him, through him. It's so crazy. This quote here is concerning Ephesians 5, 18 and 19, and it's kind of wordy, but the idea of being giving God the control. We find it here embedded amongst precepts, laying down the great laws of self-control. And it comes just before special directions, which the apostles give for the quiet sanctities of the Christian home. But then, all the while, it is a supernatural thing. It is a state of man wholly unattainable by training, by reasoning, by human wish, or by human will. It's nothing less than God in command and control of a man's whole life, flowing everywhere into it, that he may flow freely out of its effects or around. Meaning, the spirit-filled life is marked by worship and gratitude towards Jesus. He's the one in control. 
I heard this quote, I thought it was pretty witty. You've got him, but does he have you? <laughs> a little bit convicting, right? It's like, I've got Jesus, I've got my ticket to heaven, but oh, hold on, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Telling me to do something? <laughs> hold on, let's take a vote. <laughs> and my vote's 51%, yours is 49 Does he have you? Are you being led by the Holy Spirit in this? The Bible says one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father of all. In Ephesians 4, that togetherness and unity are connected in singing, that we sing together to stay unified as a believer, as a family, as a church, we sing for, for that reason. And unity takes work. It's hard. Are you being led by the Holy Spirit? I'm going to share a story with you guys. It's a small testimony about my life, but I'm going to get you to bow your heads, close your eyes, and get the band to come on up. And I want to share a little bit about my testimony in singing to the Lord. It's meant so much in my life for so many reasons. So when I was a teenager, I found a lot of meaning in singing in general. So I grew up and I didn't have a a stable father figure in my life and I went to church when I was 13, 14, 15 and there were two men in the church that really invested in me, spent time with me, cared for me. One was my youth pastor and one was my music minister. So on, I had some talent in singing so on Wednesday nights I started leading the youth and man it's like it was so amazing to sing to God and lead other people and on Sundays, I would sing in the choir and do some solos, and times I even led the music on Sundays, and I felt a call to ministry during that time, and I was like, what do you want me to do, God? And he led me to do music ministry. And so I went to college for voice, and I got a, a like a good scholarship for that, and <clears throat> God was just using that in several different ways. I was at a church that had a choir, uh, piano, organ, we had like drums, a, one guitar player, a couple singers, and an orchestra. And by orchestra, I mean one trombone player. And uh, it was a really fun time. Shortly, four or five years later, I felt called to help plant this church here. And so we moved up here and we started in kind of a band situation, kind of like they have now, leading music and singing in about... 2012 started having some issues vocally couldn't figure out what it was went to four or five different ENTs over three or four years and no one could figure out exactly what was going on And life changed for me personally, I had some relationship things happen and things happen in my life and shifted to pastoral position, a different pastoral position and I'm going to tell you what, singing used to be a joy to me. It started to feel hollow, to be honest. Being able to connect with God, it always focused back on myself. I always focused back on, on what I want to do and how I want to be and my preferences and my plans and my thoughts. And I struggled with that for years. You guys can look up at me. A few things I've learned through that is that singing to the Lord is not about me. I get to be a part of that, but it's not about me. It's not about my thoughts or my plans. I had to surrender control of those (laughs) to him. It's truly about Jesus and who he is. And singing by myself in my house to the Lord has been some of the sweetest times with Jesus I've ever had in my whole life. I 
Are you surrendered to him totally? Is really what this whole series is about, right? Are you surrendered to him totally? Are we glorifying him? Are we enjoying God in our lives? Are we, are we trusting what he's doing and how he's doing it? And maybe for you, an applicable step is to sing to him. However, the sound doesn't matter. What you say doesn't necessarily matter. But it's the heart of it, right? Let me get you guys to stand with me. We're going to sing a song that's about gratefulness and gratitude. I want to pray for us. Jesus, we thank you so much that your spirit has changed us and that we can obey you. We can be reminded of your goodness, your greatness. Lord, help us to sing from our hearts with a, with a song of gratitude. Help us to focus our minds on you. And Lord, as we lift up this song, let it be all about you as we sing as a family this morning. Let it be all about you, Jesus. We love you and we thank you. Amen.